Welcome back in. It is the local and community issues and answers right here with Jonathan Lawson. We're so thankful to have in our studios today Gladys Korn. Now, she's the director for infection prevention for the St. Joseph Hospital in London. Welcome in. Thank you very much. Now, Janice, or Gladys, tell us about infection prevention. Well, it's not rocket science. It's just simply doing the right thing at the right time and preventing infections. And this just has an impact on everybody and everything that we do every day. It's something that we learn whenever we were children, like washing your hands before you go to the back, after you go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. uh, saying please and thank you. Uh, I heard an article and it said 75% of your personality is formed within the first five years of your life. So by the time you get to kindergarten, you, you, you still have a lot to work with. But it's these things that we teach our children when they're young that will carry them on. That does not mean, though, however, that when we get older that we can't learn things because we can learn things every day. Well, there's so many different types of infections, uh, colds, flus, pneumonia. Educate me and the viewing audience about these different types of infections that people can pick up. Well, there, it, it just depends on the infection and the mode of transmission. That means how you can get it. And, and so if you look at different things, there's different ways that you can get different things. Uh, for instance, influenza. We're seeing quite a bit of influenza now. Uh, if you see that it is, uh, it is spread, it's pandemic, which just means that it's involving many people, 35 states. We're seeing large cases of it. Seeing large cases of it at our hospital mm. also. But so you think about how do you spread it? You can spread it by contact. You can spread it by droplets, which means th there's this theory that if I cough, that I'm only going to cough out about three feet. So mm. if I were to cough and cough on you, then I could infect you with germs. That's why they always talk about whenever you should cough, you should cough like in your elbow, but not necessarily on your hands. Because what do you do? You cough on your hands, then you shake hands. Or you hit the T-zone, you hit your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and then you can spread infections there. But every infection you get, mm. there's got to be a mode of transmission, and there's got to be a break in the chain that somehow invades you that you get infected. People don't realize how serious these flus and influenzas are. They could honestly take your life. Oh, oh yes, and we've seen that. You don't have to go no farther than your local news to see that I think there was a pediatric case up around Scott County that they contributed to the death of a child from mm. influenza. And the influenza that we're seeing this year, I think is really interesting. Of course, I think everything is really interesting and, and it's so diverse. But what we're seeing now is the H1N1 flu. Mm. And, 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 and let me back up and say, in history, you've had different pandemics, which means it's been spread throughout. Years and years ago, you had the smallpox, you had TB, you had the 1918 flu, then you had the 2009 H1N1 that was pandemic, mm -hmm. and now we are seeing the uh, H1N1 flu again this year, not in the numbers we saw in 2009, but certainly we are still early in the flu season. Here we are, we saw an increase in flu in, in our facility right around Christmas Eve. But if you think about it, all the schools are out of school, so you've not had that congregation of all those kids going out and in and coming under the care of their grandparents or mom and dads mm -hmm. and everything. So historically, you've seen when schools start back, you've seen an increase because you've seen the gathering of these students. So uh, right now, I would say uh, last week, for instance, we saw close to 400 people that we tested through our emergency department which is flu-like illness. Mm. Of those, about a quarter of them tested positive. That's amazing. What are ways that we can protect ourselves? Like if somebody's got the flu around us, you know, and they're coughing and sneezing, you know they got a bad cold, what can we do? Well, your first thing is to avoid them if you can. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, people that are contagious, they really don't need to be out spreading this because you can spread flu like symptoms for 24 to 48 hours before you ever have the first sign or symptom. Mm. So the most important thing that you can do uh, as a person out there is just good hand hygiene, just washing your hands, because uh, that will prevent it. It will prevent the, the spread coming to you. I mean, there's not a lot you can do when people cough on you, mm -hmm. but there's certainly those things. There's things you, can't, you have no control over, like gravity. 
Right. But things like this, you can lessen the effect on, such as washing your hands.